All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and we are back for, I believe this is episode 15 of the Iron Manager series, and today we are going to be taking on LAFC as our, we are trying to make some last ditch efforts to climb back into the Western Conference race. As you can see from the little table there, LAFC holds right now a nine point lead on us. We are, we both have played the same number of games, so... We both have seven matches remaining, so we've got some work to do. And I think it's pretty safe to say that if we don't win today, then we are not going to be able to get the first seed in the Western Conference. So so this is a pretty big game. Uh, it's a big game as far as this season goes. The reality is is that we're, we're ahead of schedule, I think, when it comes to accomplishing long-term goals. I... I, I don't think that I ever said this, but I, I would have really, I think for this team, the most we could have really hoped for, or expected, was just to get into the playoffs, maybe down here in that five, six, seven spot. But uh, we've we've overachieved, and I, that's all you can really expect, you know, is to overachieve. And I, winning the conference might be asking a bit much for this team, but some pretty big news. I did, as, as I kind of evaluated, looked at where I was, and I'll kind of explain the thought process here. Because I really only was trying to make the playoffs, and I felt like the team was, was on track. We were, we, were, we were trending in the right direction. Uh, I, I wanted to avoid going and making big splash signings that were really only going to make it more difficult to accomplish long-term goals. But when I realized what this team was capable of, when, when I realized that we had put ourselves into a position to maybe win the conference in the regular season, maybe make a deep run into the playoffs, who knows even win the MLS Cup, I decided that Maybe I needed to, while not actively pursue, I, I did not send a scout looking for any big names, but I started getting e uh, mail about players wanting to, maybe it was their agents, whatever, wanting designated player contracts. And one player came across that I really felt like I I needed to go for. He was the most, by far the most dynamic of the players who who uh, came across the radar there and it's Adam Lalana who is an English national he is a he's he's got 35 caps for an elite level national team we're not talking the US national team we're talking England one of the elite teams in the world probably one of the uh, I safely they're one of the top 10 uh, national team programs in the world Probably more like you know top eight, maybe even top five. So they're one of they've won a World Cup and they produce chunks of you know great players every year. Obviously, the Premier League might be the best league in the world. Certainly, I think they have more elite clubs than any other league in the world. So to be able to uh, sign Adam Lallana, I think it was it was just an opportunity I couldn't really pass on. Obviously, his physicals are not anything um, spectacular, but he does have he's he's got very good mental attributes, and he's got some important um, technical attributes, which will help him where I'm going to play him anyway. Uh, he's he's a good dribbler, good first touch, good passer. His technique is elite. He's got a high work rate, so he's going to give me whatever he got every every game. He's got. 15 is a good solid determination uh, he makes good decisions 14 so immediately he steps in as probably my best player so uh, he'll be playing alongside Mukhtar in the center midfield and I think um, like I said this is he doesn't complete our team by any stretch but he does what he does do is he possibly bumps us up to the next level um, and his signing actually ended up being pretty, <laughs> the timing was good because uh, Abadel Godoy, Anibal Godoy, sorry, got injured and he's going to be out for like, yeah, four months. So he, that might be the end, of the end of the season. Matter of fact, it is. He is out for the year. I think we can just go ahead and safely say that. I think maybe, I guess, 
eight weeks is the best we can hope for. That would put him back at the end of October, so maybe in time for the playoffs, but I think we can just go ahead and figure that he's out for the year. Um, uh, also lost central midfielder Gideon Zalalem only for three weeks, but that's, you know, that's still, you know, that's, we got some big games coming up in, in the next three weeks. So uh, he comes in really at an opportune time, and obviously he, he makes us a better team. I did. I think I had to give him three years, though, uh, to the end of this year, 21 and then 22. So probably he's going to start declining. Um, maybe I'll get lucky and he just, like, absolutely tears it up during this half of the season, and then somebody wants to buy him in the January window. If that happens, I'll probably sell him immediately. He'll, he will have accomplished his purpose, uh, hopefully. So um, with all that said, let's kind of let's look first at LAFC. They are they are LAFC. By far one of the best teams in the league. They still have um, probably the best attacking five or six players in the league. And so we're going to have to be on our game defensively. I've played around with my tactics a little bit, what I do tactically. And I've got a couple formations that do hold back a little more and so i think i'm gonna go with one of them i've even got a 4141 i don't feel good about the 4141 so i'm probably not gonna use that but this one um the right back he's he, he's on defensive role so he does not get forward as much and he actually tucks in um and while the dotson the left back is an inverted wee back wing back so he'll step into the midfield centrally a little bit and help McCarty. So I'll have two defensive midfielders. I'll have three, uh, really have three in the back line. And so I might play with that today. That might be what I try today. Um, it does. If I do that, my original plan was to play Romney, who is kind of more of a defensive back it, at the right back spot. But then he went and got himself injured. So he's out for a few days. So now I really had no choice but to play Oliveras, who is a much more aggressive fullback. So uh, I might just start with the standard tactics, see how it goes. Hopefully we can uh, make something happen here. So with that, with, obviously, look, they're the favorites, as they should be. Um, we do have decent odds, though, a little better than what I, I would have thought. Um, they are inconsistent in their form. They got put out of the cup, by the way. We'll go real quick, just look at, at their results. Uh, Columbus put them out, which is frustrating. That was the first team we, we beat in the cup last year. So, but they, Columbus put out, the, put out LAFC. They are, LAFC is coming off of a uh, three to one loss at Houston that 10 days ago. So, you know, maybe I'll get lucky and they're, they're not sharp. So here we go. All right, big time match here. LAFC versus Nashville. All right, so we have a corner. We get the first highlight of the game. Lana, nice ball to Mukhtar's cross is put out. Zimmerman scoops it up, leaves it for Dotson. Dotson now. Drops it to Mukhtar. Mukhtar loses it for a second. Gets it back. A cam to De La Fuente. And we have the first goal. It's 1-0. Nashville over LAFC. Let's see what happens here. Mukhtar again. He lost it a little bit, but gathered it back. Comes across the front of the 18. And then a cam leaves it for De La Fuente. Far corner. 1-0 Nashville. All right, LAFC now with the corner. They put it in, head it out, but they keep it. Vela shot is deflected, blocked, and De La Fuente clears it. LAFC now with the buildup. Vermeer to Clementes. He puts it up to Rodriguez. Oh, good through ball to Vela. Is the referee saying he's offside? Yes, okay, whew, I thought maybe he was, but it was close. Yeah, he was by, looks like about a, about a yard, maybe less, half a yard. The read to Zimmerman, to Dotson, to Mukhtar, to Dunlady. 
Total Lana to De La Fuente. Cam's ball is put out. Here's De La Fuente attacking the byline. A cam shot is put out to touch. Lactar's corner goes in, but is put away across to the to Lalana, and nothing. Here's De La Fuente beats his man. Ooh, takes a hard tackle, and the header is saved. Shot there by De La Fuente is blocked out for a corner. 30 minutes in, we're holding a 1-0 lead. Goal, or corner in, is headed, headed down, shot was saved. Zimmerman to Dotson. Oh, through ball to Vela. This is bad. Whew, good save by Cropper. And then my two knuckleheads can't just get the, can't start the buildup. Instead, we give up a corner. As Reed heads it out, Don Lottie heading down the left side, but Blackman dispossesses him. All right, here we go. De La Fuente cuts inside and ends up with the ball back, and his shot is wide. And free kick bounces off the wall. Uh, here comes Blackman. He switches the ball to the left to Rossi, who is dispossessed by Olivares. De La Fuente wins it for a second. Oh, a cam. A cam is so good at that. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh. The you know, cam shot died on the goal line. Uh, Nazarit now with a foul, and he's getting a yellow. So now mm, three of my back four have yellows. Palacios to Gijanella. Uh-oh, Blackman with a nice run. Crosses it. Oh, Janela's shot goes over the bar. Okay, so we got to the half. Um, dead even possession-wise. 50%. Honestly, that's what you'd expect from these two teams. Um, we do have more shots and more on target. But we also have more yellow cards. And that's kind of... And all three of those guys play on the black line. So that's not good. Okay, second half. I've dropped to my 4-1-4-1. Really, just because I just want to kind of see if it works the way it should. This is really not a good time to be experimenting. But, hey, if I'm going to do it, let's let's experiment on a live com where you guys get to watch it. Um, so what this is, it's a 4-1-4-1 uh, DM wide. Or just DM, sorry. 4-1-4-1 with a DM, McCarty. Um, both fullbacks are inverted wingbacks, so they they tuck in. Meanwhile, the two outside midfielders, they're set to attack and also play sit narrower, so they're going to kind of cut in. Uh, no, no, they're not. They're set to be wider. Sorry. Um, so, so they're going to be they're going to give him the width. The idea is hopefully, and I mean, you've got a attacking four which are extremely lethal for LAFC so the hope is that I just I'm a little more solid in the back and but still get the attack from my outside mids especially since they've got a couple of wing backs who are going to be pushing forward and we'll try and get our um, our our attacks that way uh, main thing right now is trying to shore up the back so we've not had any highlights Oh, except for that one, of course. Uh, yeah, LAFC gets a far post header. Brian Rodriguez. Mm. Uh, uh, we we actually, from what the from the statistics, um, the change was working better. We were we were we were having creating more shots, getting more possession, but then. Then they they scored the goal, so I don't I wouldn't call it a failure. I'm gonna keep watching, maybe watching some comprehensive highlights. Back over to the byline of Cam. Cam, I need that. Uh, Vela's free kick is headed out, and Dotson just I'm pretty sure he just gave up a penalty. Oh, that's mm, oh, that's frustrating. It looked like the coach came over. It was, yeah, they called a penalty. What a way to lose a game. We actually were playing better. Ah. 
That's maddening. Okay, so what that obviously means is that we needed to win. A draw would not have been enough. And they just are gonna keep probably keep scoring. Mukhtar gets it. It's gotta be it. Come on. Yeah, so tough loss. Um <laughs> at least you get, we definitely have come a long way since that four to nothing thrashing you guys saw in episode thirteen. So we outshot them. This is at LAFC, same stadium, at their stadium. We just, you know, we played better. We played better than they did. Uh, Fifteen shots to ten, same number of shots on target, but um, I guess they did have more clear cut chances. But you know, I I'm. Keep it positive, right? Um, definitely progress from the last game, and we know that we can beat this team, right? We know that we can win this game. So with watching a match where I see that we can beat LAFC tells me that there's not any team that we can't beat. So that's good news. Um, I'm, try I'm trying to put a positive spin on what is a match that has, si that has eliminated us from... Uh, winning the Western Conference, certainly from getting the um, supporter shield. So, um, yeah, tough loss. Definitely a lot better than that 4 nothing loss, and I think it shows that we are making some progress. The, the little experiment with the 4 one 4 one I think that's good. It, it, was going, it was going well until they got the goal from what I think was... Let's, let's look to see if that was a throw-in. I'm going to say it was off of a throw-in, which, you know, doesn't really... That's different than a free kick or a corner kick. Yeah, it was a throw-in, so it's kind of a set piece, I guess. It was off of a restart. Dotson um, got beat. You know, he's not... A, he's the outside back. He shouldn't be it. Yeah, he's an eight-header. Jumping reach is only a ten, so, you know, I still would like for him to make that play, but... Um, that's what happens when you let that cross get made. And I don't even remember when it was. The sec We had a chance at a second goal. All right, so looking ahead, six games left. Um, that game right there, San Jose is a big one. We need to win that one because San Jose right now is ahead of us in, on the league table by three points. So that's a, ch a chance for us to make that even. And if the rest of the results go our way, we can get second place. So that's what that'll kind of be our goal is to finish second in, in the Western Conference, which means that if we play San Jose in the playoffs, we'll get them at home. And so tough loss today, but um, yeah, it could have been worse. So this is Uncle Sam FM signing off. We'll see you next time on the Iron Manager Series. <laughs>